It was a darko and stormy night. Donnie is clearly remembering the best parts of that hilariously epic episode of Who's the Boss that aired the night before. If you can believe it, Mona got laid again. But also, how'd he get all the way up on top of the mountain to begin with? If you told me he rode the bike, I will smack your face off, because that's a lie. I love this movie, but there's probably more slow-mo in the first 30 minutes than in the entirety of 300. Trampolines. Day drinking. I'm voting for Dukakis. Throwing your vote away. Also, this is just the movie's way of telling us this is a religious conservative household and that she's the rebellious one. Maybe you should be the one in therapy, then mom and dad can pay someone $200 an hour to listen to all your thoughts. Expositional arguing. What the f ass? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe spend less time laughing at your obviously corrupted daughter and actually eat that slice of pizza, dad. Despite multiple bites, it's remained very much intact. There are somehow four lamps on in this dark ass bedroom. Get better lamps. Look, anyone that can draw a human eye this well in high school should either be incarcerated or given an exorcism. Yeah, well, how much security do you need in the primary bedroom? I understand the one lock, but that deadbolt is completely unnecessary, unless they're having some nasty parent sex up in here. He's watching TV, but he turned on two lamps directly over his shoulders? Does he like glare? Because this is how you get glare. So he's sleepwalking and or following a voice in his head, or both? I'm not sure I care either way, but the movie is kind of vague about it. Frank the Bunny fell for the same gag Happy Gilmore did, and just seconds from now, the sprinklers all turn on and embarrass him. <laughs> Stupid Frank. What a waste of perfectly good milk! Aha! I see Donnie is having to answer for late night sneakouts while his older sibling is not having to answer for hers! Also, <coughs> older siblings. Guess he was sleep golfing? <laughs> Watch out for that drool spot. Yes, let's make fun of the neighborhood kid we just found passed out on the golf course instead of, you know, wondering if he needs help. How long was Donnie unconscious on the golf course? It looks like it's early in the morning, but they had enough time to get a goddamn crane in there to remove the debris? Does this small town have cranes on standby in case of situations like this? Private? Please. Okay, I know happy families are all alike, and every unhappy family is unhappy in its own way and all that, but these parents are unhappy dicks. I cannot shake the feeling that the two of them would be more concerned that the engine fell on Donnie's room and wouldn't even attempt to locate him during the investigation process this morning. How did they know for sure he wasn't injured in the crash until they lifted that f***er out of the house? I'm sorry, these parents are both the best and the worst parents in movie history. Freeze it here, goddammit. Why does the guy back here need a protective full-body suit, but this guy here does not? They are like six feet apart, and hardly any further apart from the engine than one another. Signing important legal documents without a lawyer and without really even reading them. Is there any way we can make money from this? This girl Kardashian's her family tragedy almost instantly. That's cold. This is arguably the best scene in the movie, and one of the best scenes ever to be paired with an iconic pop song. You get a sense of all the primary characters along with the space of the school and some significant plot development, all without a word of dialogue. Get that scene out of here! I love how this school has a dress code, but it doesn't make the boys button their top button or wear a tie. Like, your school dress code is weak, yo. Nonsense! Everyone knows this isn't Seth Rogen's drug of choice. Also, I've seen some crazy shit in high school hallways, but even these douchebags wouldn't be openly storing coke out in the wide open here. Even Sarah Michelle Gellar had the decency to do that shit in the bathroom in Cruel Intentions. Holy shit, that's the dude from ER, and holy shit, look at the size of that fucking beverage Drew Barrymore is holding. That's gotta be 48 ounces at a minimum. How's she not peeing herself right now? Donnie Darko. Roll credits. May we help you? Why do the new students always have to come in during the middle of f***ing class in movies? It's not like Gretchen just got here. We saw her at her locker getting ready during the preschool montage. I know they put her in the wrong English class initially, but why did it have to take her so long to find the right one? They're already elbow deep into Graham Greene's short story. Um, where do I sit? Sit next to the boy you think is the cutest. <laughs> Don't f So we're not supposed to tell anyone what nobody knows. Organized religion. Man, f movies where characters whisper and the audience can't hear it. F them. F them. Also, I can read lips. And she said, Shrek has a treasure for you, asshole. Would you look at the shadow behind Jake's head? There is no light source in this room that would cause that shadow. The light is on behind the therapist, but that lamp is shaded. There's a lamp to Jake's right, but that wouldn't cast a shadow perpendicular against the wall. Gah! Frank. 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 Two years, I thought it was normal for a ten-year-old to wet the bed. Wait, how long has this kid been ten years old? Also, is there any reason she had to drag said bedwetting ten-year-old on TV with her? There's a whole other movie where this kid grows up and sets fire to the entire town. Also, let's talk about the perverse haphazard stacking of the spare chairs and desks along the back wall here. It's madness! Dang, the Darkos are already back in the house. The construction crew already fixed enough damage that they could move back in within a few days? Holy shit. When does that ever happen in the history of house contracting? I know a guy that had some storm damage to his place and he's been staying at his in-laws for almost a full goddamn year. Breaking and entering. Who enforces the laws with time-traveling rabbits? Is it Jean-Claude Van Damme? I hope it's Jean-Claude Van Damme. Hey, Porky Pig. 
<laughs> I hope you get molested. Saying this to any person for any reason. Littering, sexual harassment in broad daylight. Not looking both ways before crossing the street. Surely this is a habit that won't come back to bite Gretchen at any point later in the movie. Damn, Doc. You don't think you should have pulled the chute before Donnie had already undone his pants? This got way too far. They are having students write during school on a chalkboard without parents or lawyers present to try and determine who spray painted they made me do it on the front sidewalk. I've seen smarter police work on Reno 911. Like this cute little blonde that'll get down and dirty with the guys. Like Smurfette does. Hmm. Smurfette doesn't This is the most Tarantino-esque dialogue Tarantino never wrote. Miss Farmer. You're such a Bitch. And she conveniently shows up at this very moment, because we can't have the rando landscaper from the outskirts of town almost hit Roberta. It's gotta be someone we know. Okay, why is the time on this f***ing sign? Parents are filing in. They heard about the meeting some way other than this sign. It's not like the parents were all gonna be walking by the school today to see this sign so that it could serve as a notice of the meeting. No, the sign is here to let people know what event is going on here right now. You know, so you don't confuse it with basketball practice or a parent-teacher conference. The time of the meeting is completely superfluous to the purpose of the sign. This woman hides Jack's the emergency PTA meeting about the vandalism to yell about banning a book being taught at the school. In other words, PTA meetings. Wearing your watch with a face on the inside of your wrist. Sure, many people did that in the late 80s, but it doesn't make it any less sinful. I'd send slap bracelets if they showed up in this mother Do you believe in time travel? Well, no, but I didn't believe in talking six-foot rabbits until just recently, so... So now let us begin lifeline exercise number one. Discount Dave Ramsey. You can't just lump things into two categories. Things aren't that simple. He's not wrong about the binary designations, but the line between fear and love is continuous, not discreet. So, all the other emotions could fall somewhere in between the two points. At least I think that's what Inside Out taught me. She marks a clear X on the timeline between love and fear, but when Donnie gets up next, there is merely a slash and no X at all. They've suspended him from after-school activities for the next six months. Holy Six months? But just the after-school activities? That's both way too harsh and way too lenient of a punishment. Eavesdropping. Clearly Noah Wiley learned everything he knows about the bobbing of his head incessantly on the set of ER from George Clooney. The woman who wrote this used to teach here. Oh, look out! It looks like Mom has pulled a surprise local book about time travel by a former teacher from the closet. Did they only put this one year's photo on the wall? How did he find so quickly the one photo he needs that appears to have been mounted separately from all the other class photos? This one screenshot from Grandma Death's time travel book explains the entire movie. Yo, movie! Spoilers! Donnie follows his own future prediction rainbow clear penis blob, as one does. Now he has a gun, ho, ho, ho. Also, check off Kelly's gun. And right now there's some fat guy over there staring at us. <laughs> what the f***? You're fine with a fat guy overhearing the entire conversation until Donnie is trying to get personal? Call that asshole out immediately. Even if you were forced to share a four-person table with only two people, why would you sit right next to each other like high school romantic assholes? Also, <laughs> they're at a place so fancy it has candles and ketchup and mustard squeeze bottles on the table. As someone who was in therapy at Donnie's age, whose parents spoke directly to the therapist about my progress, f*** this scene. I'm sure it's legal because Donnie is a minor, but I don't know how you could build trust with a teenager by telling his parents everything he says to you in therapy, goddamn. Richard Kelly borrows some Requiem for a Dream tricks for his first full-length feature. Good morning, you mongrels! How did Cunningham get so much influence over the school, and really the town? Kitty is a believer, and some of the desperate housewives too, but it doesn't look like any other teacher or the principal is all up Jim's ass. But they not only let Kitty teach his bullsh** as official curriculum, they let him take over an entire assembly? Also, school assemblies. Also, also, I remember exactly three high school convocations. One was a poison cover band, one was a hypnotist, and one was when the new principal created new stupid graduation rules, like must be able to make correct change and must be able to write a check. He had a PhD, too. My stepsister, like, I sometimes worry that she eats too much. Shut up, Kim! <laughs> God damn! Donnie goes off on this special speaker and it takes all of the some time for anyone to stop him or shut off his mic. You ever hear of Grandma Death? Grandma Death is a local legend and you know she just f***ing moved here a couple of weeks ago, dude. That's like asking someone who grew up in Montana and just moved to Nashville if they know about the Bell Witch, or that car that drives around town with stuffed animals glued all around the outside of it. Alas, I have not yet been elected Queen of the Universe. Of course not, silly. You don't elect queens. Didn't your dad, like, stab your mom? This is why you don't talk about your personal sh** on the second day in a new school when you're doing DIY witness protection, no? Two for Evil Dead, please. But also, no one else is here for Evil Dead. Okay, so either this is an indictment on the low culture of this town at the time of this story, or it's an indictment on the movie theater manager that scheduled this film in this large an auditorium. Or the booking agent, my point is, someone f***ed up. Burn it to the ground. Wait, Frank, come back! Burn what to the ground? The movie theater? The giant eyeball that was on screen? The portal? Leaving your day to sleep at an empty movie theater. 
Oh, so burn it to the ground meant Patrick Swayze's house? That was super obvious. Jesus. If Donnie can just intuit that why why's he gotta ask what happened to your eye and why do you always wear that stupid bunny suit? Now that was really something. God damn it, now Jim's the MC of the fucking talent show? I don't care how loaded he is or who he's paid off. That job should go to an overachieving high school drama student. I'm just gonna go ahead and sin everything about Sparkle Motion. Okay, but she's gonna smell gasoline and smoke on him, right? Right? He walks in, sits down, eats a tiny piece of popcorn, and that's when she wakes up. No one will be seated during the dad gets drunk and confesses all adults are bullshit scene. What exactly about my methods are inappropriate? I am sorry that you have failed. What the f Yes, probably Virginia is a right-to-work state where you can generally fire people without giving cause, but almost no one does this for fear of discrimination or wrongful termination lawsuits. Also, as a viewer, I have no idea why she's being fired. I, mean, I just don't see the point in crying over a dead rabbit. Movie goes out of its way to make this the movie she shows in her last week of teaching so that he can go off about not caring about dead rabbits that have nothing to do with the movie she showed. The day... Ex Machina, the god machine. It's god from the machine, but that's just a nitpick. Thankfully, no employee in the history of movies has ever had more f in their desk than one trusty cardboard box can't handle after they're fired. He grabs her and says, I promise one day things are going to get better for you, and it's my very favorite moment in this entire film. Donnie, a kid that no one thinks cares about anyone, even himself, says the truest, most inspirational words to this overly bullied girl that just f***ing sings, man. One cent off. Hey, if this guy from the FAA is following Donnie, the least he could do is try to f***ing blend in at the party. Also, the only movie I remember where throwing a party while mom and dad are gone worked out was Weird Science, but that was only because the girl they created was also magic. My point is, it never ends well, kids. You call the cops? Yeah, they said I should leave the house and that I should go to a safe place. Oops! Eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
anywhere. Try Mubi for free for 30 days at Mubi.com slash CinemaSins. That's M-U-B-I dot com slash CinemaSins for a whole month of great cinema for free. If you're in South America, you could be watching Donnie Darko right now. And if you're looking for a different sexy brooding leading man, there's a double bill of Ryan Gosling movies on the menu. And a partnership with the legendary Sundance Institute. The point is that there's something for everyone at Mubi.com slash CinemaSins. That's it! You people have stood in my way long enough. I'm going to clown college. Wake up. Open your eyes. D-nice. Do you mean Denise? Son of a bitch! You say your name right. I think about you when I go to the bathroom. No, it does one thing it never did. Introducing Cool Mint Listerine. And I say smut and filth like this has no place in our schools. Bunny. I hate the way you talk to me and the way you cut your hair. I hate the way you drive my car. I hate it when you stare. Sir, it's the recruit drawing of a footlocker, sir! Jesus, Joseph and doggy style, Mary! That is a pile of dog sh Sir, the recruit's never been good at drawing, sir! Why the f are you my scribe then? To ensure that this frenzied dance of destruction is never repeated, I have decided starting Monday. All students will be required to wear uniforms. Two for evil dead, please. Terrence and Philip Ashes of Fire has been rated R by the Motion Picture Association of America. You have to be accompanied by a parent or guardian. <laughs>